I live in Brighton, not far from the sea, which actually you can see down the hill. I think if you're born near water, then you want to live near water. Uh, Brighton is good for my work. Um, I know people say you can get washed up there, but, and there are a few of those around. But I also think it attracts the odd creative characters, uh, not, certainly not the tick boxes of this world. And as I refer to them really as falling between the floorboards, which I guess I am. I think, the, I think people expect the studio to be a large warehouse near the beach, but it is in fact a small room in the house which I've had for about 23 years. Except the house now resembles the studio and that can be embarrassing. Also, it can look like the scene of a crime investigation. I always describe the studio as a playpen. I always think of it as, you know, I'm just a kid and the playpen's splashing colour around. You know, I've never grown up. I, I always think <laughs> that's what art's about, really. And it's fun. I'm probably not a great artist, but I think I'm an interesting one. I hope I'm going to be an interesting one. And I just have this unshakable belief, though, that in years to come, these works will appear uh, more important than they, are, than they are now. I've just got this feeling, and that keeps me going when times are perhaps rough, not going particularly well. And you, you have to have this unshakable belief. I think being an artist, you almost have got to build an armour around yourself. I was asked by uh, the, my Dutch gallery to uh, come up with a title for the show there. And I came up with Fragile Lessons. And at the time, this, it didn't really go down that well, I remember, you know. And they rang me up and said, well, it's sort of all right, but have you got something else? And this was, I think this was in April when this happened. And then the whole credit crunch over the years started unraveling and the financial axis tilted and everything. And all of a sudden, I kept hearing on the news, I kept hearing, you know, we're, we're living in very fragile times and these are the lessons we've learned, blah, blah, blah. And the words kept cropping up and time and time again. So I thought, well, I, my antenna was up there, you know, but it's, it's odd that often that happens. I actually wrote a bit for the catalogue, which I think is quite apt. Fragile Lessons. This title could sum up my life and work, the lessons I've learned over the years to do with both success and failure. Uh, there does seem to be an absence of middle ground in what I do. Feast or famine, good or bad, passion or despair, an endless list. Paintings can appear fragile when in fact they are strong and robust when they mask confidence, and they can be born of caution and indecision. Other times they seem to go off on their own with gusto, with me just guiding them along the way. Make them can feel like walking a tightrope between success and failure. One extra mark, one more layer of colour, another brushstroke that shouldn't have perhaps been made. There's no going back in what I do, no erasing, no overpainting or correction. This is it, good as it gets, fragile lessons. And I really do think that sums up probably my life in many ways. And, um, but you know, also my painting practice, really. And it has been like that. All my work's watercolour for the past 15 years, or 20 years now. Before that, they were acrylic on canvas, very large pieces, uh, very cinematic. I, I always said they were um, like film stills from films that had never been made. I used to buy books, you can't get them anymore. I used to buy books of uh, um, Hitchcock film stills. And Hitchcock framed his work absolutely superb. And you could buy the whole stills from the, the film, the whole lot. And I used to analyse these just to see how, how they were put together. And then base a lot of the paintings, like um, a painting like Compartments from 1979. That was really based around the film. The works I was doing in the critic were, were very tight. Um, and labour intensive so these things used to take months and I, I was getting frustrated in the end I wanted to get more emotion into them I mean I think they're really interesting in terms of set pieces 
the element I could not get into them from maybe my own abilities as a painter, I'm not too sure, was the emotional aspect. And that's with water I can get that. So the, um, that, the emotional aspect then almost acted like a rudder for all the work for the future. It steered the way where I wanted to go.